we are on our way to the Sacramento airport to pick up the biggest, the biggest bench presser of all time, both physically the biggest and uh, both uh, by the amount of weight that he moved, biggest bencher of all time. The Vanilla Gorilla, the 325-pound Eric Spoto. Uh, we're going to scoop that guy up. Um, hopefully I don't hurt my back doing so. I'm going to scoop him up, throw him in the Slanger Mobile here, and we're going to go over to the uh, Slingshot Warehouse, and we're going to slap a bunch of Slingshot stuff on him because uh, that's what I'm about. So we're going to do that. We're going to stop at the warehouse, and then we're going to get in a bench workout. Hopefully he can help out Silent Mike with his puny bench press. Stay tuned. So you were, you were just talking about like the first time you came in uh, super training and I, like that was uh, I remember like that was fucking cool like you uh, I never met you before I didn't really know who you were I think maybe you might have emailed one of us might have emailed me yeah. we were chatting back and forth but I had no idea of like your strength level and then I saw you um, I saw one plate two plates. And then uh, my buddy Ed Koo saw you with three plates, and he comes over to me. He's like, "Something ain't right with this guy." <laughs> he's like, "Did you see that?" I was like, "I saw what you saw, man. It didn't look normal." <laughs> That's where like, "What do you bench?" You know, and you're like, "Oh, well, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll see." You know, because uh, you're always super humble about it. And then you put up that uh, 6:35 for a double, and we were just like, who "I had only done a 6:20 for a double." We were up like, until then. "We were like, who in the fuck is this guy?" <laughs> but the way they were moving the weights was like nothing we ever seen before. And what's up? What's going on, man? How you doing today? Pretty good. Doing good? Yep. How you doing? How are you doing? Casey. Nice to meet you. 132 pound lifter. Our smallest guy on the yeah. team. Oh. Yeah. Where do we have size 14 cuffs? Anybody know? Yeah, money. Like 175. You get Yo, I played basketball like 180. Oh yeah. Damn. He weighed 180 when it was three. <laughs> <laughs> Came out of his mom at 180. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Let's go uh, train. We're gonna eat a donut and then bench. Yeah. What's the protocol? There's some secret protocol. I know he doesn't just bench. I'm Mark Bell from Super Training TV, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West, and we're here today with big time bench presser. Silent Mike. <laughs> What's going on, 350 guys? pounds, ladies and gentlemen. That's only for one rep, but still impressive nonetheless. And but someone does 100 wanna, times more. Yeah, if you want to multiply that times two and add a little change to it, then you have the biggest bench presser of all time, Eric Spoto, who successfully put up a 722-pound bench press. Uh, Eric's going to take us through a warm-up today, and uh, also uh, I'm going to try to have some discipline and listen to everything that he says about bench pressing today uh, just because I want to feel uh, the way that he bench presses. He has a much different style than the way I bench press. I tend to lift up my head and kind of do a little bit of a throwing type movement. But just for the sake of me feeling it out and me uh, learning more as a coach, being able to uh, give more great information out to people, I'm just going to 100% do whatever he says to do for today. Uh, we also got uh, Marcus lifting with us today, so we'll uh, push the envelope with the big guy here. Show us how to warm up. All right, let's do this. Start with some bands. Let's start with some bands. Why does he get the skinniest band? I get the thickest. He's just going to slap it like they a rubber band. I'm going to tear something. So like when you first come into the gym, shoulders are stiff. They're not really moving the way you want. Right. Go through a few of these things. They're moving a little bit better. Yeah, a little blood in there without trying to... I want to get as much blood in there without getting weaker on the bench. Yeah. So this, this Conserve some perfect. energy. You just do this five, ten minutes, not really counting sets or reps. Yeah, not even. I'll do a couple sets, and then maybe after like uh, first two or three warm-up benches, I'll jump back on this, and then I'm, it's a wrap. Talking about supersets? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like uh, CrossFit. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> you have uh, other people that are working out with you? You know, like uh, maybe not so much now, but like back when you were doing the when you were going for the 722. Did you have a group of people you were lifting oh, with, or course. pretty much on, riding That's on your own? Nah. 
you need a team. And yeah. I, I don't think you could get to the elite level without really having a good team around you. Oh, uh, first of all, you need a good spotter, right? Or there you, you go. Need someone lifting off for you. That you right? trust. And you need somebody that uh, that's going to be able to push you. And I, I know you trained right. with Stan a bunch. Of course. I mean, that had to be pivotal and huge. The 722 bench, I mean, right? Having someone there that you know is going to go all out every day with you, and if you do a half-assed workout, they're going to be on you. You're going to be on them if you do. Uh, they do a half-assed workout. Yeah, because you know he set world records himself, so he knows. Of course. <laughs> he's going to say, "Hey, man, that ain't going to." You know, right. even though you're still blowing everybody away, you might do 675 for two. He knows you're capable of more. Right. He's going to be like, "Well, what was that workout about?" All right, pretty loose. Feeling good. We talked a little bit about uh, eating, and we were joking about getting a big meal in or something, but you like to uh, lift maybe uh, just a small meal before yeah, you lift? Yeah, definitely not like a big meal pre-workout. Yeah. I think you're wasting too much time digesting it, too much energy. Yeah. Too what about uh, going to your caffeine or anything? Yeah, normal yeah. caffeine. Just some caffeine and get after it? That's it. You don't need too much. It's like playing a fucking guitar. <laughs> 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 this I just started doing. What do you know about playing guitar? <laughs> Nothing. But I, I, this is how I envision it. <laughs> And some of these bad boys. Whoa. I think I picked this up from West Side a while back. Right. West Side? Notice she's got like a fucking 25 pounder. These, what they got call a two and a half. Them. And it's funny, if you do stuff prehab, right. you're probably less likely to have to do stuff rehab. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so makes, simple. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? You know, but you take stuff for granted, you yeah. think you're fine. Hey, you feel good. You, you, hop on. you think you're a badass, right? Yeah. Wow. Well. work out in. Well, if the strongest bencher ever can tear something, then that means right. we're all, we can hey. all do it, right? What was that like? You know, uh, we, we were there for it. He did it in super training, the old super training gym. What was that like? He had to kind of like set a goal like that and then the hit the biggest, down? like everyone talks about bench pressing. That's right. something you talk about, like as soon as you start lifting, you start talking about it. How so, much a bench? Random strangers come up and, and ask that. Yeah, and, and they like, don't know who you are. Good. Yeah, that's no idea. They'll be at a restaurant. Was that, uh, like how'd that, that feel? Like, hit it that. was actually... Uh, a major relief. Yeah. More like a like a monkey you knew off my capability. Back. I knew I was capable of at least that. So when I bombed on the 716, which I really think was a hundred percent my fault, like just a combination of choking, bad stuff. Just yeah. I was my training numbers were stronger leading up to that meet than to the 716. Yeah, I've never seen anything like that. I was I so that. strong. That 675 in the warm up came up. Oh. It felt like there was. And 675 time. for three in training, right? Yeah. That was fucking intense. Yeah, I was, I was really strong there. I think uh, I overdid How'd it. How'd that feel? How'd that feel to come up short like that? Like you, you set, you set, that, you, you uh, set your mind on it. You thought it was in the bag. Yeah. It was rough. It was. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, you it's hard it to was, put into words. Like yeah. when you know you could do something and you fail, it's it's not like you you know when someone goes for a lift and it's like 20, 30 pounds over the PR and they're like, hey, if I hit this. Yeah, yeah. I got nothing to lose. Yeah. It yeah, wasn't like playing the lottery or something. That was, I, I wanted to hit a 730, 740 that day. Yeah. How do you uh, choose your width or how do you uh, recommend people choose their like grip width for the bench? <laughs> you know, I have, a, I have some different thoughts on grip width than most people. I think height has absolutely zero to do with it. I think uh, the better your arch enables you to go wider because you're in such a vulnerable position if you're wide and you have to go low. This is so vulnerable, but this isn't vulnerable. Yeah, so yeah. I think if you have a great arch, you're able to go wider. I mean, and somewhere in between. And then throw in bio, body mechanics and everything, but arch is gonna enable you to go wider. And really, really what you're after is trying to find, you know, where are you stronger? That would be exactly. like, that would be a way that you can would compete. Right. You find a way that you're weaker and then train that also right. so it's not too weak. Exactly. So your close grip shouldn't be like, you know, crazy far off your regular You should bench. definitely be doing both no matter what. Right, um, just to get the stimulus. Usually people get more explosion the closer you are. The wider you are, shorter range of motion. Right. So it's less distance to travel. What about feet? Feet and set up toes or feet down or tucked, kind of individual? Yeah, that's... Too individual? I mean, it's gonna be a give and take. Feet back, you're probably going to get cut an inch or two off. It enables you to get a little bit better arch. Yeah. But you're going to sacrifice some balance and stability. Yeah. And then you're going to sacrifice, obviously, some leg drive. I mean, if you're extremely flexible, I think you could have toes back would be the best. Right. If you're built like that. But not that, everybody can do that. Much. No. 
Right. If yeah. you could like it's also going to be a, a matter of like what's going to allow you to keep your butt down. Of course. So, yeah. so with feet back, it's almost impossible to get your butt up. You'd have to yeah. really try to do That's that. That's why I started doing it, just so my butt stays down. <laughs> well, I've noticed that if you just keep going wider, eventually you'll find that spot where your butt don't come up. Because of mobility or whatever. Well, your knee keeps getting lower compared to your hip. Yeah. Right. So eventually you reach that spot where, I mean, you'll find a spot where you can go flat foot yeah. and won't come up. But now is that going to give you less leg drive? Yeah, you can't flex back? your quads as hard. Right. Um, can I take a quarter or you guys want this again? Go for it. Do you think uh, missing the 716 uh, was important? I mean, it, 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 thinking back now, it's probably good that that happened. Stuff that comes too easy in life and you take for granted. Right. I like the fact that I had to go back to the drawing board yeah. and, and uh, reevaluate, and I did it smarter. I think almost everything leading up to that, I made about 10 mistakes. Right. I tried to limit the mistakes. And it shows you with limited mistakes, weaker, I was still able to lift right. more. When you're getting to the heavier weights, you know, what are some of the things you're thinking about or just when you're training, trying to clean up your form? How are you able to kind of, that chest is just staying up the whole time. How yeah. are you doing that? Well, it's, um, my lower back arch is kind of weak, but I truly think that upper back arch is 10 times more important. So I just, as far back as I can, as low as I can, chest to the ceiling. Mm. I, I want my back to take so much weight that if it's just a bar, it, you should not be able to touch. Right. If your lats are engaged enough, it should stop you right here. A little boost. So the Spoto press is not something like you didn't necessarily come up with it, you just were always lifting that way. I was always lifting it and then I modified it uh, after thinking that I was getting great results with it where I would do pauses with Spoto press because now instead of like we were talking about how much weight is resting on you on a pause. So if I got it hovering an inch above and that's paused, now I'm holding the whole weight. Right. So I'm getting no rebound. So whatever you could do with that, you, sh you should be able to get a lot more right. when, when you actually the Spoto press was also kind of spawned out of you being like, you're awesome at reps. Right. Like you did 315 for how many reps? The best of 62 ever. So that's better than the NFL combine at 225. Here. Better than the record. Yeah. Yeah, 315 for 62. But it's, it's, it's the Spoto. And it's three quarter reps. Yeah, yeah. What's, the, uh, what's the NFL record? 52? Yeah. yeah. At, the, at the Bros. But Pros, kind of I got 45 locked out. You, you, he had someone there and he told me Very I all strict. my reps how to get locked out. So that's. Um, like again, it's kind of born out of necessity, out of like what you love to do, because you, right. you didn't just you, you didn't just happen to be good at uh, high reps. You worked right. on them all the time. Exactly. I got you. And then um, big reps, big pecs. Yeah, yeah. those pecs. Well, well, you don't want to pec popping. You're not going to lock out 20 reps. You, you, the, the wear and tear on your elbow is just going to. Yeah. You won't make it through three weeks of training like that. It's just too much. And then and then if you, you if you're really driving, you almost overextend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's why I only back do, tightness. I don't know what you guys do with speed work. I only do speed work with bands. Because I feel like, number one, it's teaching me to accelerate through the lift, which I want to do. And the band right. obviously increases tension as you go up. Which straight weight, you'll have to decelerate to protect right. your joint. And then, and and then gravity, yeah. at the end, it's like giving you that little bit of cushion. So I'm not like overextending right. up there. Yeah, you almost <laughs> can't over push into it because it's too much resistance. Like, what was a typical, like, workout that you used to do? I know, I know, like, as you got more into powerlifting and you wanted, you set your sights on right. uh, Scott Mendelson's uh, record, that you, you had to switch things up a little bit. But what was the, the protocol, you know, going from 500 to 600? What did you used to do? Um, I always believed a lot of flat bench. That was always a major thing. Um, ton of reps? High reps, low reps, always mix it up. I like to do reps and cycles. I'll go four weeks of... Um, Four weeks of higher reps. Try to get some muscle growth in there. What's higher reps? 10 to me, that 10 to 12 range okay. is that sweet spot for building muscles. Or if you look at bodybuilders. And then um, then I'll drop it to like fives and then drop it to threes. Do you go by a percentage or you just have a number in your head like I want to hit 550 for 10 or something? Uh, I don't, percentages kind of don't even make sense to me. Yeah. Like what are you basing that percentage off? And, yeah, yeah. So you kind of have a number in just your progressive mind. overload. It's where I'm at, and I'm trying to beat it the next workout. And if I can't beat it on my triple, I want to beat it somehow. I want to beat some form of a PR. Would you do two sets of three at the same weight the following week? Right. To beat it, or I'd like to yeah. go up each week. I mean, but there's gonna be weeks that you got to stay at that weight. Yeah. But then I might hit a 315 for a PR. I'm, I'm trying on to a hit back down on set. A PR. Yeah. I want to feel like I left the gym doing something better than I did. The last time. So yeah. a typical workout where you, let's say you're on the higher rep scheme, you're doing a, a 10. 
How many uh, would you, how many like working sets of ten? Actual working sets. Would you say there is six to eight on my okay. flat bench, but and I'll probably so six so six to eight sets that are like over sixty percent probably. Right, and yeah. then I'm going to throw okay. in of those at least two sets close grip minimum. And are those always uh, progressively heavier, or would you ever do five sets of ten at a set weight? I'll do a lot of times set weight. Yeah, and usually I won't get ten maybe yeah, on yeah. the third, so it'll be like yeah. the first set was eleven. Second might be 10, third might be 10, fourth might be nine. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. just going at it though. Yeah, I'm not gonna drop it down to get 10 reps. Just get three. So when you were, uh, you know, you did a lot of arm wrestling and stuff, and when you're, when you're locking up with somebody, you're squeezing as hard as you can, right? Right. Well, what, what are you trying to, what are you trying to do with it, somebody? It, actually, not because if, if you're squeezing me as tight as you can right, right here, I, I'm gonna literally be able to crank you back. Right. So here. So I mean, there's there's different ways of doing feel it. Like I lost. There, there's arm wrestlers who don't even they're putting pressure this way. They're not digging their fingers ah, in. I see. So I'm just like giving right. me a little pressure. Right. He's gonna be coming back like this. Right. He's not even coming side. <laughs> yeah. And if if you lose your fingers or your wrist, right. I don't even have to beat your arm. Your arm's already beaten. Right. So it's but part of what you're hand. doing there. Like I mean, I just saw like your your forearm tensing up. Oh yeah. And it's transferring from your forearm, your elbow, into your bicep and into your shoulder. Of it's kind of the same thing we're talking about with grabbing this as hard as yeah. possible. Right? Strength to strength. Strength is going to carry you through everything. You're never going to complain about being too strong at any muscle, no matter what. I complain about it all the time. It's a burden. <laughs> being this handsome and this fucking strong. You guys want this so or a This three. big of a cock. <laughs> Eric, who else is from uh, like that New York area? Lifter-wise? Seems like uh, kind of a hotbed for some mutants. It's in, uh, it's in uh, Mendelssohn from there, too? Similar area? Mendelssohn was New York born City. in Brooklyn. Right. Grew up in uh, California. And technically, so there's been at least three all time like, guys who I guess were from New York. Uh, me, Confessor. Right. And, and where's, our, where's our CD from? Ted our CD. I want to say Pennsylvania, but I Yeah, East wrong. Coast, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, what's in the water back there, huh? Yeah. Well, it's kind of like a lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> West I mean, Coast is about having a six pack. Now, East Coast is like that anyway, though. Yeah. When I grew up, it was about who's the strongest in the gym. Who squats the most, who benches the most. Yeah. We kind of weren't that big on deadlift yet. Maybe it came around later, it was who could squat and bench the most. I think that's kind of gone through a, uh, eras too. You know, 80s, maybe 70s was all strength. 90s, early 2000s was all like just looking pretty. And then now you kind of get like a, you know, at least I see the mixture, mixture of both. both. Right, it's either one. Yeah, yeah you're trying to be, trying to be strong right. and look pretty good. Yeah. You know, everything you see on YouTube or magazines, 100%. you know, they're highlighting people that are good at both. Even the CrossFit guys, you know, Rich Froning, right whatever you know he squats 500 snatches 315 or something stupid and he's jacked you know what i'm from new york also and the uh you know, the guys that would come in they'd, they'd come off their construction job right. and then they would bench you know 500 for three or four with the work boots and then, yeah the work yep, boots the whole thing boots. yeah dirty That's jeans the, that was the style yeah next guy would you know it was like everybody did 500 yep. or more yep. it just didn't i'm like you know i remember as a kid watching it just being like what the fuck is going on here <laughs> And then you away. compare yourself to grown men who's yeah. 13, 14 years old, and that's what pushes you. Yeah, I'm like, no, like I should be able to at least do four plates yeah. if they're doing five of them. Yeah, you don't look at it like I'm a kid. You're like, I want to hang with them. Is this your normal uh, whip on this thing? I know no, you're on thumbless because no. of shoulder. You're narrower, too. Uh, I would never, training competition-wise, uh, pinkies on the ring yeah. to the narrow side go. This would be considered kind of close grip. Yeah, this is just to, to protect the shoulders right now. Yeah. <sighs> Build up the triceps and strength. Yep. Yeah. I just feel a little safer the closer I am on my shoulders. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. Yep. So you benched uh, 722, best bench press all time. Um, then you had shoulder surgery, yeah? Right. What's the best you've, uh, like, What's your workout, uh, best workouts since then? Um, 405, that's it. For how many reps? 10 reps. 10 reps for 405 is kind of where you're at now. I right. think you sent us a video and it looked easy, but obviously you're yeah. trying to rehab. It's just, it's just it, it gets real tight. Yeah. Uh, that's the, the main problem. How, how light did it feel in your hands? Still pretty light? It, it felt really light. Yeah, but you, obviously you got to be precautious. Right. You want to be the best again. The rotator cuff just, I think, just really starts swelling up. It's just not used to it yet. Yeah. It, it's going to take probably Couple more months. I'm gonna start pushing it. Weight. Yeah. You gonna try to stay around 405 for now? Yeah, just get some blood in it yeah. and see how it feels. Sweet. Come on, Smelly. There you go, chest up. 
Yep. That's it. <laughs> he did That's it. so hard. <laughs> it felt <laughs> uncomfortable, didn't it? You sure you can handle this? Mm -hmm. It's 400 pounds. I know, I know, boy. 405. 405. Eh, 400. He's cutting five yeah. pounds. Yeah. <laughs> Take me back to when you were 12. <laughs> Two, three, yep. Yep. Two. There's ten. Nice work. Yep. Stay with it. There you go. Woo! <laughs> ah. Which one, Eric? See, so I'm um, able to get like a little. We'll switch it up, whatever we're going to. You want to go slingshot? Uh, slingshot? Yeah, yeah. slingshot, four plates in a slingshot for you? Yeah. You uh, mentioned, Eric, sometimes you'll uh, add a slingshot and add a little bit of weight, keep the yep. same rep range. Say we're doing triples, so I'll add weight, keep going triples, or sometimes, exactly. you'll, sometimes you'll keep the same weight, and add slingshot, like, double the reps. Yeah, we also don't usually add a lot of weight. Like a lot of times we'll just add like 20, 30 pounds. Like, right. It's not like but it's an overload. Yeah, yeah, a little bit great. more. It's an overload. It feels good. Yeah. It protects your shoulders. What slingshot do you use most? I use them all. All right. Um, so even though you bench 700 pounds, you use the blue one here I've, and there. I've used every one. I like the uh, newer lifters. I really like them to use a lighter slingshot. Right. But um, th then work their way up to bigger slingshots once they're used to handling yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And I also like how it, it, it teaches you to bench in the right form. And, and once you do enough, anything enough times, it becomes natural. Right, and then but, you'll do the same thing without it, hopefully. Right. That's what it seems to be working. Uh, you got any tips for people like, uh, you ever see like sometimes people have the weight like way back in their wrists sometimes. You ever see that? Um, you know, saying with wrist wraps or without? I've seen people who, who yeah, like- Yeah, wrist wraps can help, but you got any other things that can kind of help them stabilize? Because we put wrist wraps on people too and they still grab the bar like yeah. that. Yeah. Hands all in that, front. That's, that's a tough one. I've tried to mess with that. Yeah. I think just I'm such right a bad habit. It's just something they need to kind of stop doing. They, they, just gotta, they just gotta not do it. I mean, Nothing feels good when you've done something for a long period of time and you switch it. Right. So you have to figure out a way to adapt. You got to go backwards sometimes to go forward. So people don't like to go backwards. Here we go. Tight. Get the shoulder blades. What? Squeeze Two, up our tight. Big air. Yep. There you go, Marcus. Nice. Good. Good job. Maybe flared a little early. You could probably kept it a little longer. So we just uh, hit up some slingshots. Now we're going into kind of secondary accessory work, yeah? Right. Work on some rotators, get a little pump. Yep. This thing will shake you around a little bit, obviously. Uh, the bar is not metal, it's bamboo or some weird plastic. See the bend in it already. Yeah. Um, how's your setup? Do you try to bench the exact same as your normal bench? Same bench. Everything the same? Same thing. Higher reps, 10s to 20s? Yeah, I keep a little bit higher range on this. You're not gonna be doing triples with a bamboo bar. So what are we gonna do? Let's do some 15s or something? Same grip, same everything? Oh, it's all greasy. Yeah, let's do sets of 10 to 15. Oh. Come on there. See how bad I am at this? Oh, Another thing to point out too is, you know, yeah, we have the bamboo bar, and it'd be great if everybody had access to this. Uh, I've heard of some people using a PVC pipe before. Uh, the only problem with the PVC pipe is it's probably not gonna be able to handle that much weight. Um, but the whole purpose and intention of this exercise is not to handle a ton of weight, so that may not matter too much. Um, but you can also just use a regular bar. You can hook this up, a similar setup to a regular barbell, even if this was just a regular plate and some bands, and it will still wiggle all over the place. It's not going to have the same effect as the bamboo bar. Uh, this uh, style is, is superior, but 
it could be done that way as well. And if you're a newbie, uh, make sure you have a spotter. You could uh, lose your teeth. Yeah, you need somebody to kind of protect your face the entire time. Especially my face. It's the money maker in this whole <laughs> shindig right now. Oh yeah. One thing I like to do with this exercise is to kind of do a spoto press because once you bring it to your chest, you can kind of restabilize. So I kind of like to have it be unstable throughout the whole movement. That's fire. Anyone who bodybuilds would like this exercise, you get a crazy pump from it. It can also create a ton of muscle soreness. Eric, you ever do um, close grip with this or change it up or just kind of? Yeah. yeah, both. Actually, I mix it up. Yeah. Uh, dip's just a great compound movement. You can go real heavy. And uh, my favorite thing about it is you don't need anyone there. You don't need a spotter. So, I mean, you can go to the gym by yourself. He might need a spotter. Look at that. <laughs> go, oh, wait. You guys are going to shoulder press me? And worst comes to worst, just throw off. <laughs> uh, typical rep range for yourself when you're doing these? About 6 to 12. You want to get a little least over six reps on something like this. Kipping. He kind of crossfitted it there and then nearly died. <laughs> uh, Eric, what are, we, uh, what are we trying to accomplish here? I'd like to just leave the gym with my arm feeling like ripping through the skin. That's nice to pick up pump. ladies at the grocery store? Yeah, or? That's basically what it is. <laughs> that's it. Video over. Get a pump. Go to the grocery store. Get yourself a date. You like to get a pump, uh, you think it kind of helps with hypertrophy, kind of helps with uh, you know, keeping your muscles and joints healthy too? Or are you just doing it just purely to be jacked? Probably purely to be jacked. I like that, I like that theory. You said you push all your accessories uh, heavy, right? So we're, even though yeah. we're doing sets of 15 to 20, you're still going almost oh, max 15 or 20. And then probably, um, five, probably five or so reps would be a little bit of momentum. Yeah. There'll be some clean ones, but there'll be some garbage. Yeah, but who cares? And this is uh, kind of fast paced too, like you just yeah, way rip, rip it through three or four sets fairly no. fast. Yeah, just ripping through 130 pounds with one arm. Just walk in the park. Try that. Me? I just did 60 and almost died. I'll try it at the end. It hurts so bad. All right, we're uh, hitting up some uh, finisher work with Eric Spoto here, just trying to get a pump, hitting up some reps. And this is a great uh, back exercise it's going to show us that has great transfer over to the bench press. Tell us what we're doing here, buddy. All right, we're going to want to set up exactly like we're benching. Although we're rowing, we're thinking about the negative of the bench. So he's going to want to set up and stand so where when this comes out the back, it's going to be exactly where he would touch in bench. He's going to want to set up like a bench and then pull it just like you would on his negative. A lot of people don't necessarily have this exact machine. Could you kind of use a T-bar? Anything kind of chest supported kind of works? I've tried. If you could get your hands on this, this works the best, but yeah, He's you can do it. Yeah. He's not going to use the seat at all? Yeah, no seat. Kill the seat. Stand up. Getting that exactly how he's benching. This is his bench form. This is where it's going to touch on his bench. Let's see. There it is. You could do some paused, just like a real bench. His lats are contracting. Just how you want to be at the bottom of the bench. Just keeping that tension on by not extending the elbows out too far, right? Yep. There it is. It's perfect. Perfect? Perfection. Now we just got to put on some weight. <laughs> What's like sets and reps, typical hypertrophy stuff, kind of 8 to 15, something yeah, like that? 8 to 15. That's, that's that sweet spot. Just one uh, red smile? What, what I'll do sometimes is load it up, max it out, maybe do a drop set to finish it too. Really murders you. Leave the gym with the pump. Go visit the grocery store. Get yourself a date. We've never been so close. Pull that deep. Pull it. You got yeah. it. There you go. Mm. Yeah, remember Stan kind of talked about deep elbows. Exactly. Pulling down. You want that bar almost trying to touch where it would touch. It's going to touch in the bench. You need that touch it. You can see his traps and everything kind of working similar. You saw yeah. my traps. I saw your traps. They you came out. Traps. They popped out for a second. <laughs> for a second there. All right, so I think that's uh, that's the workout for today. Thanks for taking us through that, Eric. No doubt. That's the uh, bench press workout with Eric Spoto. We did some uh, regular bench pressing. We did some slingshot bench pressing. We did some bamboo benching. Then we moved into some dips, or Mike moved into some dips. Uh, then we did uh, a little bit of push down action. Yep, get a pump. Down. A little bit of push down. Finished off with some back. Even us out. I think that was about it. That's it. 
So, you know, we started out the day with uh, some compound movements, some heavy movements. As we progress through the workout, we're still trying to push the weights heavy, but the rep range went up a little bit. And with the rep range going up, uh, the rest intervals went down a little bit. We were looking a little bit more for a pump. Now we look handsome. Now we look ready to go to the grocery store and pick up some ladies. Yep. And uh, that's pretty much it. So thanks a lot, Eric. And stay tuned for more stuff uh, with Eric Spoto and howmuchyourbench.net. Thank you. I want to feel like I left the gym doing something better than I did the last time.